In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. All right, Chaplain's Report today does come from the Book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 14 through 18. And uh, when Paul is writing this, it's important to remember the context in which it's being written. So let's go ahead and read this. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Now there's two parts of this passage that I find incredibly significant. And a lot of it has to do with really the reason that this verse came to mind was because of the situation between Ellen and George Bush and, and the strong statement of unity that I think that we could all take a page out of, of their book and apply it to our own lives. You see, the way that this passage starts out is bless those who persecute you. Today, that may not be a strong enough statement. Because what we think of as persecution today, and I'm not saying that it's not, I'm just trying to put it into perspective. When we think about being persecuted, we're thinking about somebody, probably an atheist or some kind of secularist, that is trying to force us to bake a wedding cake for a gay couple, or is trying to tell us that we're not allowed to preach out in the streets or talk about Jesus in certain places. Is that persecution? Yes, it is. It's not the same as what was going on in the first century. It's important to remember that when this was going on, what Paul was saying is, bless those who persecute you. He's talking about people that would raid your house in the middle of the night and threaten to kill your children if you did not deny Jesus Christ. That wasn't necessarily the most common practice, but it was going on during this time. And specifically with the church at Rome, this is before some of the really bad persecution, but persecution of Christians was still pretty high at this point. And so, when Paul is saying this, I think it strikes a much deeper chord if you understand the people that he was writing to when this took place. He wasn't saying people that are mean to you. He wasn't saying people who don't like you. He wasn't even saying people that might try to force you to do something that goes against your religion. He's talking about people that were literally killing their brothers and sisters. And this is the people that he recommends that they bless, that they pray for. That's a hard thing to do. And that's why I said at the end of that segment that, that I did a little bit earlier, that the higher calling, the more important thing, is love. Kindness is important. Kindness is a good thing. Kindness is something that we as Christians are commanded to do. But the reason that love is the higher calling is that sometimes loving someone means being unkind to them. Sometimes when you really love a child, for example, the most loving thing you can do is to not be kind, to punish them, to take away something they like, or to add some kind of punishment that they dislike. When you have a friend that's involved in some kind of self-destructive behavior, it might be the kinder thing to do to not bring it up. But the loving thing to do is to try to put them back on the right path. And so... When we're talking about blessing those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, he's saying you can't wish ill will even on people that literally want to murder you. You should be praying for them, you should want good things to happen to them, and you should desire to be a blessing to them in their life. It may be one of the hardest tenets of Christianity to follow. But it's one of the most important because it's exactly what Jesus Christ did for us. 
which is something that Paul himself points out just a few chapters earlier in Romans 5, that it was while Jesus Christ was still our enemy that he chose to die for us. That's the kind of love that Christians are called to. And he gives some recommendations on how to do that. For those that are persecuting us or those that are evil with us, uh, have been evil to us, the way that we do this and become a blessing to them, look what Paul says, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. So all we have to do is, is celebrate with them when they celebrate and mourn with them when something terrible has happened. Even if they are, our in, they are our enemy at the time, they'll see our true colors. Maybe they change their ways, maybe they don't. But I guarantee you it's going to make an impact on them. Even if it's not something that's lasting, it'll at least give them something to think about. It will resonate with them on some level, even if they don't realize it at the time. And furthermore, he goes down further in this and, and says in verses 16... Um, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be of a haughty mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. You see, the thing that can kill a relationship like this is pride. When he says associate with the lowly, he couples that with don't be arrogant and do not be wise in your own estimation. In other words, when you evangelize to somebody or you're just being kind to somebody, you don't treat them like they're less than you. Now, maybe you really do have all the answers. Maybe because you know the gospel of Christ, you are far better suited. Your station in life is far better than theirs is. But even if that's true, you don't use that as an excuse to be haughty in your own mind. You don't puff yourself up because of that. Christians aren't better than other people, but we are better off. I mean, we have the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, so of course we're better off. That doesn't mean we're better. And we shouldn't act like that either. I mean, for goodness sake, if Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, can approach people with humility, surely we as sinful human beings should be able to do the same. And not to look down on people or treat them as though they're less than us because they believe differently than us. See, that's the crux of what is going on here. And then he ends it up with, I think, one of the, the greatest passages in the entire Bible. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. And if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. You don't retaliate. When somebody strikes against you, when somebody does something evil to you, you don't retaliate and want to do the same thing back to them. You try to do what he talked about earlier in this passage, being a blessing to them. Rejoice with them when they're rejoicing. Weep with them when they're weeping. That's how to live like Christ and to treat others the way that you want to be treated. That's the way that you get to the mindset that you can say, Lord, forgive them the way that Stephen did when he was evangelizing to the elders. That's how you get to that point. And you, it's not easy, but it's possible. And with God, anything is possible. And finally, be at peace with all men. The gospel... People don't want to accept it because they understand that it shows them that they're flawed, that they're vulnerable. And let's be honest, it's one of the hard following Jesus is one of the hardest things you're ever going to do. You don't need any more roadblocks other than the ones that are already there. Living the Christian life is already incredible hard. Don't make it harder for these people. Don't make it harder for anybody else. And one of the ways that we do that is we do our best to live in peace with them. And that way, if they do have a theological disagreement with us or a disagreement on, on politics or something else like that, it's not going to be a hurdle because we try to live in peace with them. We can argue with them, but you don't make it personal and you don't act like you know more than them. You see, living in peace with all men is not something that's really obtainable by a Christian. I mean, look at the life of Christ or the life of John the Baptist. 
as good as they were, they were executed for their beliefs. Even though they did try to live in peace with all men, there were men that didn't want to live in peace with them. But the qualifier there is, as much as it depends on you. And I think that's one of the strongest virtues in the Christian ethic. That other people's behavior doesn't dictate what you do. That when other people are nasty to you, you don't respond in kind. When other people do evil around you, that's not a license for you to do evil yourself because everybody else was doing it. Your relationship with God is between you and Him, and your actions determine that. Your salvation is not dependent upon anybody else, be it another Christian or a priest or whoever it may be. It's all between you and God. That relationship is between the two of you, and the only mediator that you need is Jesus Christ. And because of that, your own behavior determines where that relationship goes. And that's why Paul says, as much as it depends on you, try to be at peace with all men. It's something that we'll not be able to achieve as even Jesus Christ wasn't able to achieve it. But it doesn't mean it's not something that we have to work towards, that we're commanded to work towards. Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.